Hello again and welcome to another edition of our discussion with Professor Mohamed Hassan, focusing on Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa and beyond. With me, as always, is my good friend, Ustaz Mohamed Hassan. Hello, uh, Ustaz. Ustaz, welcome. Hello, uh, Ustaz, and thank you very much, uh, uh, Comrade Elias Samaro. Great. Uh, let us continue. This is our fourth part. Uh, as we promised last time, today we're going to focus more on the internal situation in Ethiopia in the past two years, especially the reform process. But in order to understand our viewers, uh, please take us back to a fair point to start with the 2005 uh, election. Uh, and from there, uh, step by step, bring us to the present. What transpired? How did the TPLF regime slowly collapse? Very good. Uh, first of all, uh, I divide the TPLF in three uh, parts. Uh, the first TPLF, which have succeeded and took over the power in 1991. And uh, 1992, uh, when the regional election was coming, it got frightened. This is a minority which is always constantly frightened and uses it, the state uh, structure to eliminate other groups which they consider that they are competitors and uh, that they will marginalize them because they didn't have any program of building a new nation on the new basis. They have never learned also from the, uh, the past and they have their reading uh, of the past is very, very short, and they have uh, taken over the power. The first thing they did is an acrobatic film that by eliminating the OLF from the transitional government, and immediately they have created their constitution, and they integrated it in 1994, into 1994-1995, and then immediately they went to the election. So 1995, they have run the marathon alone and they won the election. Three years later after that election, again this minority regime was in crisis because it cannot. This minority regime, it only survived by crisis and creating crisis and trying to solve the crisis. 1998, again since 1997, the first thing they start soliciting saying that first, they wanted to, uh, 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 the two line discussion among themselves happened. The discussion, it is really discussed among themselves, but it is one can read it. It was a two line. One is the former prime minister wanted that it is Eritrea economically to be integrated. Eritrea was using the Ethiopian uh, currency and so, and so on. But he understood finally that Eritrea had another type of economic policy, which is totally different from what Wayane or Belle Zenawi had in his mind. The first contradiction started at the border areas. Those elements who are also have another concept, which is contrary to the prime minister, start creating border uh, uh, trade conflicts that it is the start uh, uh, taking the goods of Eritreans and Tigrians who are trying to go to Eritrea and come back and creating at the border uh, a sort of inconvenience. Uh, because yeah, of these, that, are, these are the small encroachments into the indeed. Indeed. Eritrean territory in Badda, in Badme and elsewhere. Correct. And, and also on trade. Once Eritrea uh, agreed with, with, with the Ethiopian government and the Eritrea issued it his own uh, 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 money, monetary. This also brought uh, another panic within the Wayani because it is the strategy of the TPLF and particularly of the late Prime Minister Mali Zainawi. Macro, in a macro economy, they wanted to swallow the Eritrean economy and integrate, as they call it, uh, or recognize, recolonize Eritrea in economical base. But Eritrea has an, another concept of economy based on self-reliance and so on, so on rebuilding what, uh, what was destroyed by the war and so on. And they delinked and they made, they 
published or they printed their currency. This, the most extreme, the Sea Abrahas and so and so on, who wanted and they were so frustrated. And at the same time, they think that it is without uh, 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 going to war, the EPLF and the Eritrean government, our secure base in power, it will be in danger and it frightened them. As I have said in the beginning, this minority had always been insecure. So immediately after the election, three years later, they created the so-called border problem and then they went to war. And we know that until 2000, what happened, they were officially defeated and 2002 also they were defeated legally. The so-called radicalist, the ethno-nationalist, extreme, extreme racist type of ideology they have developed. Finally, in 2000 and 2001, they split it and they were just the way to the organization. Then TPLF entered into the second uh, uh, part of it is life. 2005. The Prime Minister, they thought they wanted to show to the international community that they are Democrats and they wanted to open a window of so-called democracy for the international community. And that 2005 election, the window turned into a tsunami and they have lost in most of the urban areas and so on. And this brought them into panic. And finally, they have to use repression. An extreme this was, uh, excuse me, this was the uh, 97 election, according to the Ethiopian calendar, in which the Knejit alliance uh, won. Uh, most observers Indeed. say Indeed. that it won in a free and Indeed. fair election. Because, because of their theory, saying that it is uh, 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 in their uh, theory of uh, their document, which they call that it is... Uh, 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 our base is the peasantry, and once we uh, uh, convince the peasantry in our side, we will encircle the cities, and they developed an idea called the revolutionary democracy. When the, this election happened, it proved that the big cities and, and the urban areas rejected them. This brought them into panic. In 2005, also, they had a serious economic crisis. By that moment, in Somalia, that is in 2006, the, in Somalia, the Islamic court have defeated the warlords in Somalia and brought peace in a big part of, of, of Somalia. And this brought panic. And Wayani had a problem. They tested his back and they told him, go and destroy the peace in Somalia. And they knew, they used it as weakness, and finally it has entered, and it entered into a big military crisis, and it invaded Somalia. There was a resistance uh, and, and, and of the Somali people, and finally they have occupied Somalia. And they mm -hmm. remained in Somalia until they were uh, uh, thrown out from the power. So Thus, uh, the TPLF in essence, uh, prove themselves to be reliable anchor state, client state of the United States. Indeed. Would you say that? Indeed. That is because it is for external forces, uh, they have understood that this minority psychology will always be dependent to the external power because it could not solve this problem with, with the Ethiopian population. That the, uh, the, the head of the Ethiopian population toward this minority regime is increasing every day, every hour, every single minute. And that is why it makes them frightened and they have to be dependent with external forces. And the external forces understood that this mercenary uh, uh, regime can be utilized for the purpose and for the strategy and tactics they have designed for the region. From that perspective that it is, uh, both of them had allied and they have intervened in, in, in Somalia. In this process, one has to speak in three major internal dynamics or tools that they have used. First of all, TPLF, to maintain its domination in Ethiopia, 
And to maintain the domination in the Amhara region, in the Oromo region, and in the Southern region, they have to use organization created by them. These organizations who have no oxygen of their own, created by TPLF in the process of the struggle, some of them, and later on after they took over power also, the Southern uh, uh, people were, uh, organization was created. And finally, they brought them as an umbrella was called EPRDF. In fact, EPRDF in real sense doesn't exist. The one who's deciding in every element, in every stage of the process, it is the TPLF and the TPLF alone. The, the TPLF Central Committee and the TPLF Politburo, 30 Tigrians who are dominating the whole state apparatus, and the others are, in fact, which I called in Amharic before the Bajaj, that the three others, they are only tools to dominate, to, to frighten their own people, to put repression in their own people, and to be a spies in, in service of TPLF. So the relationship... Proxy organizations of the TPLF, then. As, or in, in Amharic, as they call, used to call them, Talalaki or Talatafi Drijitoch. Talalaki and Talatafi, they are both, they are, because they have no their own brain to think. Somebody else is thinking for them, and they are the tools of, of repression, they are the tools of the killing, and the, they are the tool of uh, marginalization of all Ethiopian people. And in, in Oromia, it is the OPDO. And in, 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 in Amhara region, which is led by Barakat Simon, is the Be'edin. This situation also brought a serious problem for TPLA. Until 2005 election, most of these Talalaki or uh, uh, Talatafi rigids, they didn't have any educated element. For example, if you take the OPDO, until 2005, there is no even there is only one university graduate in their party. The same for the Amhara. They couldn't recruit the educated element of Amhara, the educated element of the Oromo people, because most of the educated young people, even as as Talatafi or as an adjective of TPLF, and they didn't want. Remember when I was discussing with some Oromo militants. They told me when they were in the university, there was only one OPDO member, which is totally isolated from the Oromo community, because the OPDO and the and and and, uh, and, and the Amhara organization, seen by the young people and the general population as an agent and an agent Talalaki for the TPLA. So there was no sympathy at all. But what happened is after 2005 election, gradually because of the economic crisis that existed, that is most of university graduates, they couldn't get a job and so on. They joined the political party in order to have income. So job opportunities. Yeah. There's job opportunities. So these parties, they became a sources of income, a source of, of having an income to, to, to establish their own lives. Suddenly, the OPDO it reached 4 million members. Uh, 4 million members, a lot of educated young people joined. The same for, for the Amhara organization, Baden, and so on and so on. And, and these ones, the young who joined the, 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 the party, gradually bringing new ideas. And in fact, they were pushing and putting, like put, uh, they are pushing from the down, that it is demanding their own right, demanding the autonomy of Romia, demanding the autonomy of Amhara, the grievances was cooking within the party. That's why you could say the party itself was physically split into two. The head and the middle ranking, they are in favor and they are always eating and dancing with the TPLF and the other, the leg and the stomach and so on. It was very far from the TPLF and it took its own course. Finally, mm -hmm. it is in the split body what happened, that it is you have half of the OPDO or big part of the OPDO is no more in, 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 in talking terms with his own leadership. And this had also pushed uh, that it is finally did come a discussion among themselves and so on. And this organization, in fact, 
They are not organizations that like a mercenary organization, parasite organization in their own people. And this generational gap is start pushing and, and, and bringing the differences slowly until 2009. That is why the president of, of uh, Oromia, Mr. Abdisa, when he says that 2009, it was the calendar which I put it. that the video for 2009, it was created, it is a servant organization, a dormant organization in service of TPLA. But he says in 2000 debate, when there was a debate within the OPDO, three options came. And this three option is one who believed in evolutionary theory, we will slowly change. There is no problem and there is no hurry. That idea was rejected this state in the discussion of Central Committee and their Politburo. The second objective, they say, is possible to do, but the damage will be very high. And we have taken says in his own speech, which we heard it in Amhari, he says the reformists took over the power. We, the reformists, as he says, that for the first time, the OPDO, without the notice of the, their masters, the TPLF, we have elected our new leadership and the central committee. And this also angered the TPLF that it is why they didn't inform us. Now I'm speaking mm -hmm. of um, the process of the OPDO because it is, we are going to come, it is the center of the most important segment of Ethiopia is Oromia and the Oromo people. That when the OPDO take this initiative and keeping distance and taking a nationalist line, this was the beginning of the end of the Wayani uh, domination in that country. Of course, in yeah. If I, if I may interject here uh, to to clarify the timeline, uh, when Chimelis Abdis, the president of uh, the Oromia region, was saying a new group of leadership came in 2009, I think the 2009 was in Ethiopian calendar, which would be. Uh, 2016 or 2015, around the time of the Oromo protest, that is, right? Bro, yes. So can you link these two, uh, these two events? On the one hand, there is a groundswell, a uh, popular uprising is beginning, I suppose, is it 2014, 2014 yes. or 2015? Yes. 2015. This then pushed the OPDO and the young leadership that is coming, the young Turks, so to speak, to reform within themselves and listen to the voice of their own people, the Oromo people's grievance on the ground. Would that be correct to say? That is correct because the heat was coming from, from, from the popular forces. That mm. is normally for, for, for a government, uh, 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 every government have it is his own early warning system. Mm -hmm. And this early warning system, which gives them the signal what's happening in the society. In 2014, the first uh, uh, demonstration happened in Ginchi. Nobody have noticed. But in 2000, uh, after two days, that demonstration had been transformed into Ambo. And this is what made me to think what is happening. In 2014, mm -hmm. if, we, if we look the situation very clearly, there was a very good harvest uh, 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 in Ethiopia at that moment. There was a very uh, good rain. And normally, majority of the population in Ethiopia, they are peasantry. And it is, if you have a good harvest for the peasant, that it is, they will sell their, their, their product, they will have money, they will change their clothes, they will uh, paint their house, they will remarry their sons and daughters, uh, and, so, and so on. It is, a blessing day or a blessing mm -hmm. months and so on. But even though that is the government banks was, was giving loan to, 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 to uh, uh, the farmers about 10,000 every year in order to, to, to support their economic capacity. Uh, that year, 2014 also, that the bank which is supporting the farmers, the farmers refused to, to, to borrow money, not less than uh, more than 1,500 bills, some of them uh, 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 borrowed from, from these banks. This shows that 
as I have said in the past, the population reaches to a situation that they don't want to live as before. And the regime is have reached to a, to a situation it cannot rule as before. So what ignited this 2014 uh, 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 rebellion, spontaneous rebellion of the population, or spontaneous revolution, or extended into Oromo Amhara areas, this is a suffering and the consciousness of the masses reached to, to, to certain level. And the regime, the early warning system of the regime, is not able to deduct what is coming in the future. First of all, the intelligence service and the police, when we look, the police in Oromia, most of them are Oromos. They are recruited in order to be analyzed. So big part of the police, they are also part of the society. They are known in the, in, in the population. They are children and daughters of the population and so on. So the police themselves indirectly became rebellious and started joining the popular mood and the popular rebellion. This brought the security system of Wayani, which have ruled Ethiopia. It is through that, which is 100,000 intelligence officer, uh, intelligence service officer in Oromia and all in Ethiopia and so on. They couldn't do the job because they didn't have the sufficient information to give alarm to the ruling class or to the ruling body of the TPLF. And this rebellion mm. continued and continuously continued. It is not located only in one place. It became more wider in all Oromia in a, in a coordinated manner that it is neither the security nor the police nor even the army could control it. And it took a mature step for the last four years. This, of course, replicated also outside with the Oromo uh, 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 population and diaspora. And the role in this, we have to admit, the role of the OMN and Johar from Minnesota in transmitting all this information and connecting the dots, it played a very important role. And this situation is that episode, which is that uh, the president of Oro uh, Oromia, when he said that it is for the first time we met and we brought the reformist to power. The control of the TPLF had been weakened, and the TPLF is seriously confused, is not able to squash and crush the popular revolt, whether in Oromia or whether in, in Amhara region, and this gave them a chance. Here is very important to the Oromos. It is not only Oromos or Amharas or Southern people. Sometimes in historical situation, organization is to understand and to see beyond themselves. This also happened in India. Uh, uh, before I start, I would really like to advise my Indian brothers, uh, Oromo brothers and Ethiopian brothers in general to read and understand the historical experience of a lot of colonized, dominated nations in the world. Uh, I really like that it is uh, uh, people, intellectuals in diaspora or inside the country to read this book written by a British historian, the late Victorian Holocaust. This is about India, big part of it. That in, in 1870, there was a serious famine in India. More than 36 million Indians died. But the system, the colonial system, sent a young, clever colonialist who have studied in, in, in Cambridge as a supporter or advisor to the Indian colonial administration. When he arrived in India, and he traveled all India. He saw that it is Indians are dying like flies in the street. The population of India, all of them are saying and, and, and becoming angered. They say, we have to rebel. We have to fight against the British. We have to chase them. India, Britain was subsidized by Indian grain. Britain was selling, taking the grain of the Irish grain, 
and food and the food which is produced in India and dumping it in the international market, which is means for British worker, which is itself is suppressed and oppressed in Britain, his bread is subsidized by the family. So how see the linking of this international ecosystem? So he heard all the rumors that Indians, they were so hungry and they wanted to revolt. Finally, after finishing his, his journey within India, he came to Calcutta. Calcutta by that moment is the capital of the colonial administration. And he goes to, to the colonial, the colonialist community, the British community, the kids playing there uh, and riding horses, the men is eating the nice, delicious Indian food. And of course, the Indians who are cooking, they call them Babu. Babu means he's a Negro in an English term. And he comes in there and he asks them, he said, how is it like? And then they told him, they laughed. As you see, we are <laughs> living in a heaven. Life is very good here. You see, uh, British civilization uh, brought to India. We are enjoying India. We are enjoying the food and, and drinking their own whiskeys. Then this young man, he goes back to his office and he writes a very long letter to the to the to London to to the center. He says Germany, that is 1870. Germany and the Bismarck have been unified. Our economic hegemony in UK in in, in, in Britain is um, dominating Europe thanks to India because we colonize India and we lose India. But Germany is the most dynamic, economically dynamic, and it is a rising star. If we lose India, finally we will lose Europe and we will be surely defeated by Germany. And he says, I suggest, instead of ruling India directly as we have been used, let us rule India jointly with Indian aristocracy. And collaborators then. Collaborator, which is to create Indian opidio. Mm. He says that we, the English and the Indian aristocracy, together we can rule India. And for that, he created the Congress Party. The Congress Party is not an invention of Indian. It is created by the British colonel, Mr. Hume the far-sighted colonialist who understand the dialectic and the dynamic among the Indian community. He says, let us rule with Indian aristocracy and little bit is an emerging, the new Indian bourgeoisie like the Berlas and the Tatas and so on. We can jointly rule. So the, it is true that it's gradually that it is this, the opidio of India is the Congress, and the Congress was ruling together and suppressed all Indians until nationalism developed in India itself. So 1870 until 1900, that is 30 years, jointly ruled the British and the Indian OPDO together, ruled India. By the first election which the English had brought and got frightened that it is gradually the Lahore uprise, a sentiment of, of Lahore is in, now is in Pakistan. Uh, uh, nationalist sentiment was developing with the growth of the capitalism and, 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 and linking India, most of it by roads and train and so on. The growth of market to a certain extent, the emergence of Indian so-called pity bourgeoisie and educated class and so on. This brought the need for a change, and not only that, the need for independence. Mm, those like uh, Gandhi, Gina, Nehru, who were educated in Cambridge and Oxford and came back. Indeed. indeed. Joined, uh, so, radicalized the Congress Party. So the second part of the Congress Party, which is, as I have said, uh, uh, after 2005, OPDO grew by the young university graduate element, the same after 1903 in India, 
a lot of young Indians studied outside, studied inside and so on. They themselves came from the bourgeoisie and the petty bourgeoisie classes. They joined the Congress and they wanted to have space for themselves. And oxygen was very limited. The first thing which, which, which ignited them and nationalist sentiment to develop in India is the 1903 local election. For the first time, the British organized a local election on the communal basis. What I mean? Communal basis is in a sense of religion, that Muslims, Hindus, Christians, and so on, Sikh. And this Buddhists and, yeah. And, and, and of course, the communists, uh, uh, they were not there yet, but it is, they were supporting, uh, they are pushing for Indian independence. But what happened is, India on the basis of, of communal, communal in a sense, divide the rule of the old type, and this had frightened that India will be fragmented, and the nationalist element, the patriotic element, it became stronger, which is later on, after 1903, the embryo of the seeds to create Pakistan with Ali Jannah, Ali Jannah, Gandhi, and now the Prime Minister of India, Three of them, three reactionaries, came from the same area called Gujarat. Uh, Indians, when they joke, they said Gujarat always produced reactionary politicians. Gandhi, Ali Jannah, and uh, Moody, now the prime minister, which is Hindu nationalist. So probably there is a machine only produced reactionaries in Gujarat. But in a, anyway, that it is this nationalist sentiment gradually developed. And with the world situation is changing, the First World War, when it came, the grip of the British capital on India and in Egypt at that moment was weakened. This allowed Indian capitalists and Indian industrialists, they could dominate the market. And in that four years, from 1914 until 1918, big Indian industrialists developed and big industrial bankers came. And, and, and this is the Berlas, the Tatas, the famous families of industrialist families of steel, and so on and so on. So once this, they grow up, national industry slowly started developing in India. Finally, this national bourgeoisie, in one sense, national intellectual, uh, intellectuals who think in terms of independence, and so on and so on. And the growth of the working class in India by itself because of the industrialization, this brought a very strong nationalist sentiment and the independent movement, which Gandhi himself, to a certain extent a reactionary, lived in South Africa, came back in 1920s, and the movement continued. And finally, the OPDO, the third OPDO, which I call the Congress Party, took a pure nationalist, pro-independent, anti-colonialist stand and liberated India. That we see now India as, as, as an independent federal state. It is possible within the OPDO, this kind mm -hmm. that the first, which was a servant, a doorman, recruited by the, uh, 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 the TPLF, uh, the minority uh, uh, frightened uh, uh, TPLF regime. And those who are recruited, they, they use, in fact, the ideological father, of, 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 of the OPDO is called Chaltu. Now he's in America, he published recently a book. They gave him even a nickname called the Chaltu. Chaltu is the group which uh, 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 split it with uh, C. Abraha and so on and chased it away from, from uh, uh, the TPLF after the split in 2001. So 2005 election, 2005 economic crisis, 2005, intervention in Somalia. 2005, the young people joining the Amhara and the Oromo organizations or these Talalaki organizations. And this broadened the basis and the link with the population. 2014, the population refused to leave as before and the regime cannot control and it is early warning system collapsed and the revolt continued, 
and it became the revolt of all people of Oromia, which is, means in Oromia, all forces, including the OPDU, including uh, the, the, the police, including all elements of the country, the petty bourgeoisie, the marginalized youth, and so, and so on, they came together and revolted. The major mm. issue In this uprising, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, was the land question, right? The master plan expanding Addis Ababa, taking land away from the Oromo peasants, uh, impoverishing them, making them landless. This was finally what triggered the, the uprising, so to speak. That is correct, because uh, uh, the, the, the history behind it, exactly as I compared it with India, 2005 election, the serious problem CPLSS, it was defeated in the big cities and so on in urbanized areas. And after that, it is, of course, I have mentioned what they did in Somalia and so, and so on, and the economic crisis they faced, the CPLF. So ideologically also, CPLF have shifted. Now, Malazenawi shifted from the old ideological rhetoric, which calls that it is our center is peasantry. He transformed his ideological thinking into what they call uh, 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 Limatawi Mangus, or developmental state. This is the new ideology he inculcated uh, among his uh, APRD. Is no more the concept that it is the peasantry is the center of, 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 of everything. Now it has to be a new ideology, which is, means that, uh, that developmental state must be developed. Developmental state means, in another word is, it is legalizing theft and robbery for the Tigrayan bourgeoisie and the Tigrayan petty bourgeoisie. In the name- Kleptocracy, in other words. Klepto exactly, that, that it developed. And the kleptocracy, when it continued, the appetite of the kleptocracy is to grab land, to open the country for grabbers, to loot the resources of the nation. Brought a serious contradiction among the peasant in Oromia, which is losing land, marginalized, and so on. So it reaches to the level that it is, the OPDO could not function as before, because the OPDO now literally must be a mercenary army have to chase Oromos from their peasants, from their ground, have to take the land from them, and so on and so on. And it did to a certain extent. But it could not continue because they have seen it is partly also their families. They are also Oromos to a certain extent. That there is a sentiment there. And the anger of the peasantry against Opedio became very, very much strong. And from this point of view, that the discussion that it is brought in the OPDO after 2014 until 2016 is the pressure that brought it, that discussion, and the reformists could come to power. This is the situation we are facing uh, uh, in 2016. So what it is the same to the Amhara area, the same to the Oromo area, to a certain extent also is the same to the south. So in this in the Gurage zone and the Gurage zone and so and so on. Of so, course, the the Somali region has always been in open revolt. The region is a quarantine. It, it is it is a totally you could call it is a uh, uh, killing field. A region of low intensity conflict for uh, Indeed. decades. Indeed, yeah. it is a region, a rebellious region, low intensity conflict, genocide, and so on and so on and so on was there. So it is another situation is the Somali region and it's totally quarantined and it's closed and nobody knew what is happening there. That's why majority of the Ethiopians, they get surprised when you tell them what happened on that area. Now to come to our point, that 2014, it is it's the drop, huh? the final drop which broke huh? the back of the camel and this continued. And then with two years later, the change, the reform is coming to power. And the reformists thought that it is, they have to take a nationalist stand, they have to follow their own population, and finally in 2018, with the slogan, the Lama team, the Prime Minister, and Lama, and so on, came to power. With this change, and the chasing away of, of, of the TPLF, 
a new element, a new historical situation was developed. Here is that the Oromos got for the first time an historical opportunity, and still they have that historical opportunity in their hands, but they are not using it properly, unfortunately. 2018, mm -hmm. that forces who have been outside, one is that the young activists and so on and so on, which is connected, they are in thousands, connected also to the OMN and Johar Muhammad and so on, all have entered into the country. Then with the agreement, uh, uh, Dr. Rabi, he made the prime minister with Eritrea the peace. Then finally also, he signed a lot of agreements with all Ethiopian and movement who have been stationed in Eritrea, including the OLF, and all of them, they came into the country. Once they came in into the country and stationed in the country, when we speak in terms of inter oromo situation, that it was a golden chance that these three generations, which they don't know each other, but they speak Oromania, some of them, they never met each other. For the first time now, they met in liberated in their own in, in Egyptian capital. They were received very popularly by the Oromo people and so, and so on, and they met. So for one year, they continued, and there was a very big popular support. The first contradiction came between the OLF and the government. At that time, the agreement, the Abagadas and Johar and all this, they have involved. And finally, that, that peace was, was signed in the AMBO conference. We remember that it is Johar, the, the Abagada uh, the, of the Tulama chairman, the, uh, the Abagada chairman, all came, Dawood Ibsa, everybody came. We saw it in the television. And finally, they have signed an agreement to be in a speaking term, to continue the relationship in cordial, brotherly way and so forth. A good plus point for me when I analyze to solve the inter-Oromo contradiction, not inter-Oromo as people, but inter-Oromo organization. They can speak, one is OKDO, which have a historical enmity to TPN to OLF. OLF have historical enmity to OPDO, these two, one being a puppet of the Wayani, another one is an independent organization which have been chased from the country, killed and so on and harassed and arrested in the, in the time of the transitional government for the first time came face to face. And this, the Abagadas and everybody have come together and solved not the whole problem, but they brought them into a speaking terms. It was a plus point. The second important point which the Oromos took, and they could have to go back to that lesson, when the OPDO, the OPDO, the t-shirt they had, the clothes they wear, it is a very dirty cloth. It's not liked by the population. OPDO, it is really a very big, a very negative name in the historical, in the psychological sense of the Oromo. OPDO means associated with Wayani, associated with TPLF, who killed Oromos, who took the land from them, who marginalized the Oromos. Millions of Oromos have perished with that. Uh, hundreds of thousands, they were arrested and killed and so on. Millions have migrated from that country and left and so on. So it remembers a bad negative memory. And to solve that, that the Lama team with the Prime Minister and Lama together, with the Jimma conference, which I consider it was uh, a forward-looking uh, uh, conference. All Oromos, OLF chairman and, and OLF group, they were there. Johar, they were there. Ofeko, they were there. All Oromo parties, they were there. Kamal Galchu, they were there. Everybody, that it is all Oromo, because they were in the same table, and they have changed the name of OPDO to Oromo Democratic. These two actions, if they could add more other actions, a reconciliation 
in a sense, minimum understanding among the Oromos could have developed. They are not the only one. Oromo, it is almost 40, 45 million. It's almost, it's a very big nation, we could say. But they, if they have understood how to solve their inter-organizational contradiction. The Irish have been colonized for 800 years. It's not the Oromos only have been suffering. Huh? They have uh, lost their language, the Irish. They were Celtic speakers. Half of their population had died with, 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 with uh, famine when the potato harvest was and so on. The Kennedys, they, they, they left Ireland uh, through misery and so on, so on. Millions of Irish people migrated to the United States. So if one reads the history of other people, as I did with India, I really ask my brothers of, of, of Romo, to understand others, they have to understand uh, others before uh, to understand themselves. The best book I consider, Ireland in, in Her Own, by T.A. Jackson, will give a very clear description how the English colonized Ireland since the 12th century until 1920. Ireland got independent in 1920. The oldest colony, different organization developed among the Irish and so on and so on. Finally, they have to bring, there is a minimum understanding among us. That is why Champagne brought it. That there is the IRA, the, the Socialist Party, and so on and so on. All is for national independence. But they came in turn, in, in our division, only who will benefit? The colonial power. Therefore, let's put our ideological differences, first Ireland, and if it is Ireland, Let's come into one minimum understanding. I think Oromo organization, they should have developed the same tactic as it happened. The same in South Africa. In South Africa, you have the ANC. In South Africa, you have the Pan-African Congress. In South Africa, uh, you have the Black Consciousness move Movement of Steve Biko. In South Africa, you have the Communist Party of South Africa. In South Africa, you have the ANC. But all of them, the COSA too, the labor movement, the UDI, Wonderful. churches, uh, civil, society. civil society. But in the anti-apartheid anti struggle, they had created an umbrella. An umbrella. Oromos could have created also uh, such kind of umbrella in the speaking term and so on. And we have seen what happened in South Africa. In the, state oh, the PLO of, for the Palestinians for that the matter. The same with PLO. There is Al-Fatah. There is, 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 is uh, of George Habash, the other one. There is a lot of other, all they came and they say we are PLO. On that basis, the diversity of the Oromo organization is so, is there and it's not as big even as the others. There is diversity of geography. There is a diversity of religion because the colonial, the, 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 the dominator always have separated Oromos not to know each other and so on. The development of the economic development of the country didn't allow Oromos to communicate it as a pastor threat. And one of the symbols of one of the founders of OLF, Baru Tumsa, how far sighted was this man? In order to fall, huh? uh, uh, after the Mech uh, Atulama, uh, and, 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 and he wanted to forward when he uh, secretly they were uh, envisioning to create the OLF, he married, he is from Walaga. And he married from Shoa, Tulama, in order to merge the Oromo people, that it is the unity of the Oromo people must be one. Uh, his, 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 his wife. Of course, this uh, would not be to deny that his spouse, also, there was also love there. Of course, of course. But it is the leadership, the quality of the leadership to play. Oromos, they have tried all their best in exile also to resolve their own contradiction. Now, almost when I say I'm speaking about organization, I'm not speaking about the people. But the organization, they have to be prudent, very clever, understandable. That almost can have five, six parties, there is no problem. But the minimum understanding, they have to come into their term. They have to stand for the, the right of their own people. They should not fight and create contradiction in a pity, a small problem. Because if Oromos are fragmented, and Oromos, which are supposed to be enough, the vehicle of building of New Ethiopia, 
and bringing peaceful Ethiopia, democratic Ethiopia, at the same time also peaceful Horn of Africa. If Oromos are fragmented and fragmented among themselves, then the possibility of Ethiopia, if Ethiopia will go or will be Balkanized, not because of what other people say as Yugoslavia, but because of the failure of Oromo political forces, including the prime minister himself, then yes, Ethiopia can collapse. Because Oromo is the center of Ethiopia, is the biggest part of Ethiopia, and they are not able to come into a speaking term, into a minimum civilized relationship among the different political parties. They should stop that this short way of thinking which they have learned from the TPLF. TPLF is a minority. It is TPLF have no historical strategy. TPLF is a tactical organization. It's like a thief. And a thief always plan how to steal. TPLF is not an organization, even doesn't represent the people of Tigray. So to copy from TPLF what they call in Amharic Tulumalar, and, and I have to uh, try to make an intrigue against Comrade Ilias in order to eliminate Comrade Ilias and so on. But in that way... You or in know, other words, the zero-sum game. The zero-sum game. That Oromos, it is not their history, it's not their psychology. They, have, they don't have to indulge in zero-sum game. That is one. Second important problem, Comrade uh, Elias, a lot of young people, and a lot of, because two years we have lost, they really believed, some of them, that Ethiopia is a federal state. Ethiopia has never been a federal state. Federalism, for Wiyane, is a means of ruling. Normally, eh, the federalists, those who demand federal rights, are minorities to protect themselves in their area. Eh? Federalism is a process of centralization also, as I have mentioned earlier. But federalism for Wiyane is the official language of, of federalism of Wiyane is tribalism. You integrate an organization for them, and then you sit on the top of them, you use the army and the security to dominate them. Eh? Dominate, and the ideology will be so-called federalism, and the federalism in a sense that Amharic and Oromos cannot talk to each other. So You have to divide them always. Always you have to divide them, and all put the separation wall so that the Oromo doesn't speak to the Amhara, the Amhara doesn't speak to the Gurage, the Gurage doesn't speak to the Silte or the Walaita, and so on and so forth. Yes, and the, the slogan, the division, the aspirin for that, uh, what Wiyane uses, that it is, it wants to inculcate among the Oromos the concept of Neftanya Sra'ah. Neftanya in Amharic means somebody who carried the gun and came to the south. The Neftanya Sra'at, in, in a political, in a historical sense, have collapsed in 1974 popular uprise. The Neftanya who lives in the city or in the town, who owns also land, and where the, uh, uh, the peasantry is almost in a slave situation in the south, that situation have disappeared from economical base. Mm, it's and more or less like the serfdom of the Tsarist Russia. Indeed, exactly. And that have disappeared. As a class, that Neftanya have disappeared, doesn't exist anymore. But Neftanya as ideology survived. Because the only way you can divide and dominate Ethiopia, first by dominating Oromo and Amharas. How you can dominate? But by telling to the Oromos, the Amharas are Neftanya and Tempetanya. Second, you have to put a wall between the Oromos and the, uh, uh, and, uh, and the Amharas. Frighten the Oromos that the Naftanya will rise up from its grave and it will take power. This propaganda technique which TPLF have developed and understood to a certain extent the psychology of partially of a segment of the Oromo population. So it incites that the new Anastasia Sarat is inaugurated by Prime Minister Abin. It's is, like the boogeyman, uh, say to the children, ah, oh, the boogeyman is coming and frighten them. And that is it. 
indeed. That is what TPLF is doing. They, ha they have no other force now to do or, or to come back to power. They are very far from the center, 850 kilometers in Makale. They are quarantined in two hotels and so on. The only means they have, they hope that the balkanization and the division among the Oromo organization deepens. And uh, uh, the strategy is they have created, as they have uh, yesterday declared, they have uh, they became the Mecca of, of the Federalist Organization of Ethiopia, as they call it now. Huh? They are the Mecca. They are the defender of the federal system. They are joking on, uh, on, on, on the face of the people. At the same time, inside that it is the government in Addis Ababa is a new and a regime, and so on and so on, and this and this. So this uh, division, they have to deepen it. The problem is that among the Oromo organization also, there was no frank discussion happened. The debate level is very low. I appeal to all Oromo organizations and sympathizers, whether they are outside and inside, please sit and think twice and discuss what is the differences between the different organizations. Why they cannot speak among themselves? What is the problem? Why this contradiction increases and brings a lot of suffering for the Oromo people? And I think they have to push and pressurize all the political parties, the elderly, the abagadas, the intelligentsia, whether it is inside or an outside, the officers in the army and so on. You have the brain as anybody else. You can solve this problem. You can, you can have five parties, there is no problem. But you, you can be in a speaking term, and the verdict will be decided by the election, and the Oromo people will choose whom who will be responsible for them. Why the killing? Why the contradiction, the antagonism you are creating among your own people? We all Ethiopian people, we became hostage of the inter-Oromo contradiction. Because Oromo is the center of Ethiopia. If Oromia is not stable, if Oromia is not uh, able to function, Ethiopia will not function. And that way, I think you will be responsible. History will judge on you. You had a historical chance. And that historical chance after 150 years of suffering and domination, with a revolt, with a hard sacrifice, you have overthrown the parasite system. Now you are not able, after you are free, to sit in the table and talk. It is for these political groups, including uh, the prime minister, I call shame on you that the people of Oromo have paid a very big price to bring all this freedom today, which we have all of us. Of course, all the other people also have contributed. Please come to your sense. Be responsible. Third, you also put us in hostage. We also, Ethiopians, we want also to live with you. We want also to build a new Ethiopia with you. We also want a democracy with you. We want, we can work together a new house with you. And not only that with you, we want also a peace in that region with you. Please come to your sense. I think all other Ethiopians from other nationality and other language who are, uh, are speaking, put your pressure on the Oromo or political forces. Don't try to keep quiet and see that it is, this is not our problem, or you, uh, it is our problem. Oromo is the most important, the center of the country, the most important, demographically very important, and it is our problem. Oromos to speak among themselves, it concerns us. It's not only concerns Oromos. We want Oromos democratically to choose their own leader. Oromos to, to participate. Oh, uh, it would be fair to say that uh, Oromia borders almost every other uh, nationality or ethnic group except Tigray, right, in Ethiopia? That, that is true. Uh, they border everybody and they are the center. The center in a sense that if they don't agree and, and, and they, the, 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 the contradiction become out of hand, and then it goes from not political groups, that it is the majority of the people are from rural areas. It turns into clans, it turns into religious conflict, and so on and so on, and the diversity. The, but what unifies them, if it is, turns against them for division, 
then Ethiopia as a country can disappear. It is nobody is the Oromos. If they fail, Ethiopia will fail. Oromos. Is that uh, perhaps the reason why the TPLF having been defeated in the center and fleeing to its uh, northernmost stronghold province of Tigray is now uh, targeting Oromia and instigating clashes there so, so that there will be chaos and once the chaos uh, happens there, it will affect every other part of Ethiopia. Is that why it's focusing for the most part on Oromia? That is true because TPLF, as I have said, as organization is, organ is an organization of bandit groups. Uh, uh, bandits have no society or nation building ideology except for stealing. For those who wanted to know a difference between revolutionaries and bandits, the British historian Eric Hobsbawm, he wrote good books, two good books, Eric Hobsbawm. Please Google it. One is the book is Banditry, Bandits. Of course, bandits can have an organization, can have a charismatic leader, and so on. They can be able even uh, fighting capacity and so on. But they have no society, society uh, and, and, and social and economic ideology. They are bandits because they wanted to rob. Revolutionaries have another idea to change society to bring democratization, equality of, of, of human being, women rights, workers' issue, and so on and so on. These two fundamental. Therefore, TPLF is a banditry. It doesn't even represent the people of Tigray. So what is TPLF did? It expanded this territory elastically. It has taken land from, from, from uh, Amhara's area, Walkait well, uh, uh, and so on. It have even occupies the legal uh, uh, Eritrean la uh, land until now. So TPLF can only survive by creating contradiction. Now the opportunity they have and they got and their understanding is Oromos cannot speak Africa. The diversity among the Oromos is very big. The slogan of them, as I have said, federalism and Naftagna. With these two tools of propaganda, we will make sure that the contradiction among the Oromos becomes deeper and deeper and deeper. This is the Kitson. General Kitson is the father, who is a British, who had fought against the Mamao movement in Kenya. Later on, he built, uh, is the father of a low intensity war. The same in Malaysia, Malaya, and so and so on. Kitson, he is also the one who ex made an experiment of war in uh, 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 Belfast in North Ireland. When I went to Northern Ireland, I was invited by an, uh, an Irish comrade, and I went there and they invited me to the pub, Irish pub. When I have entered in the pub and so on, uh, he and his wife, and uh, they were, uh, we were talking, and suddenly the husband, he started talking with somebody, and the wife, she went to the toilet. And then there was another man who was standing near to me. I don't know him. He's another Irish. I started talking to him. When the wife, she came back, she saw me, I'm speaking with a stranger. Then she told me, Comrade Muhammad, may I talk to you? And she took me outside. She told me, Comrade Muhammad, in this place, you are going to stay for three days with us. You are our guest. We wanted to protect you. And I said, what happened? What mistake I did? She said, three questions you cannot ask. Where do you live? Where do your children go to school? and which football team you support. I said, why? She said, when you ask these three variables, you will know the person whether he is an Irish Catholic or an Irish Presbyterian Protestant. All are Irish. They live in apartheid uh, uh, British. This is Denmark mm -hmm. who did it. The next mm -hmm. morning, she took me to the graveyard. Comrade Elias, it is something to, to, be, to cry, uh, something to be cried. Uh, when we went to the, it's a very big graveyard. One big gate, it is for the Catholic. The other big gate is for the Protestant. 
the British, they made sure in the psychology of both Irish, both of them are Irish, whether they are Catholic or Protestant, they build a wall, not up, but they build a wall down, that even the dead cannot talk if after they die. CPLF is building a wall that Oromos and Oromo organization, in no way they have to sit together and speak among each other. The moment that the Oromos are divided and fragmented in, in, into even a clan level, then TPLF says we are successful for our project of the Greater Tigray. That is the strategy of TPLF. My Oromo brothers, please, it is for the sake of yourself. Bring sense to yourself. Come to the table. Behave like a civilized political organization. Discuss among yourself. You don't do that, history will judge you and history will punish you. As I have mentioned in Indian situation, when the British inaugurated the communal election, the communal election when the Congress Nationalist Party, when they realized that India must be divided, the British policy was divide and rule, and it must be divided by the two communities, which are Indians, Muslims, and Hindus. The nationalist sentiment, they were in a very sad situation. To understand that, finally, the young man, study in Cambridge University. He, he, he is a barrister later on became Ali Jannah from Gujarat. Few years later he collected the Muslim League. And he and Gandhi and Moody now, they speak the same language. Ali Jannah, he is an Ismailite Shia Muslim. He is a secular man. A man who had always drunk whiskey, he never prayed even one day. Mm -hmm. The Muslim bourgeoisie, South, independent, unified India, that the weak Muslim bourgeoisie thought that they will lose their market and they will be dominated by Hindu bourgeoisie. They opted for a world was created by the British called Pakistan. Pakistan is few for that. My brothers and sisters, Oromos, I want you to read. This is a book called Pakistan, Between the Mosque and the Military. Haqqani, Hussein Haqqani. It will give you a very clear description. Then let uh, it's a good book. A very good book. I read it upon your recommendation. It's a, it's a, it's a good book. I really book. ask brothers from Oromo and other Ethiopian to he, and then even Pakistan, East and West Pakistan, later on split it, which is one became Bangladesh and so on. Uh, for my brothers or almost, uh, in order to understand their own history and to connect it with other people, you, you, they are not the only ones who are living in this globe. I want them to read of an Indian historian which explains Indian situation, which I'm explaining from 1919 until 1947. The how and how the Congress changed. The same as we are expe explaining about the OPDO. So Nit Kumar, India and the Raj, the Raj is the British, in two volumes. He clearly explained the transformation. It's possible an organization created by enemy, it comes gradually, because of the societal change, it can turn against the enemy itself. Therefore, the antagonism between OLF and the OPDO of the past, they have to remove from their mind, and now they are in a new situation. The OLF of the past, still, if we have a grudge, they have to forget. Now, Oromia have reached, or Oromos have reached to another level. Finally, the Oromos also have to think with whom they are living. Did they want to live with us? Did they want to live within Ethiopia with Amharas, 
Somalis and southern people. By, by, by way of a segue, I'm not going to interrupt your train of thought. I know where you are headed. But uh, I would like to bring to your attention, of course, you're familiar with it, uh, in that uh, famous 2015 keynote speech that uh, the scholar John Markakis gave to the Oromo Study Association, towards the conclusion of his speech, he brought two points. One to the Oromos, make up your mind, in or out, what do you want? Uh, we addressed that part. The second uh, point he made was, you Oromos, uh, of course, are oppressed, but you are not the only ones who are oppressed in that uh, state, in that empire state. Is that There are others who are even more oppressed than you. So instead of only talking about your suffering, your oppression, try to form a solidarity of the oppressed uh, and expand your uh, relationship with, uh, with other peoples. I mean, all peoples, uh, the popular class in, that, in, the, in the country uh, face more or less the same kind of oppression, the same kind of poverty, the same kind of uh, marginalization. So uh, with that in mind, then proceed towards the conclusion because I know where you are headed. I didn't, it was not meant to be an interruption, but no, to give you a second. Excellent, it is very good that you remembered me that what uh, uh, Professor Mercato said and what I, uh, he also said it in Addis Ababa when he was invited there and so on. He said, uh, 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 don't forget also the peasant question. Again, he said, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the Oromo city bourgeoisie can be a revolutionary for the Oromo people and also for me, Ethiopia, to build it in new basis. And to build a new Ethiopia on the new basis, they have to be very democratic and open and understand first themselves and then understand their neighbors and understand what they want for Ethiopia in the region. If they fail, they cannot blame anybody except themselves. The, the, uh, the rating, the rating rate of the Oromo political parties must be on the three fundamental curriculum. Oromo is the biggest group in Ethiopia. At this particular time, there is no one nationality ruling class against other nationality ruling class dominating doesn't exist in Ethiopia. That have evaporated. The minority TPLF have been chased away thanks to the popular revolt, and now is quarantined in this area. The Oromos, they have to lead with other Ethiopians together to build a new country. As Markata said, are you in or out? We other Ethiopians, Somalis, Amharas, Southern people, Afars, and so and so on, we cannot continue to suffer because we don't agree. Our faith also is connected to your debate. Your debate, it's a fundamental one. Fundamental in a sense, can we build together a new house? Can we work together in, in our children and our, our future that we can build together? For the population in Oromia, put a standard on the Oromo political organizations. Not every charlatan is a political organization. Oromo is bigger than political organization. It has a very big history, culture, a very good culture. Mutasama, uh, uh, it has even swallowed a lot of other people. Culturally very advanced. Assimilated. Uh... Assimilated, very helpful, have no uh, history of vengeance. Uh, have no history of zero, zero sum game. To the extent even a word, a lie, 
didn't exist in, in, in Romania until 60 years ago. Please take the most positive part of your historical and cultural background. Use it as a means of developing yourself and developing also with others and establish a new country and a new psychology and new culture. That empire is built by military garrison. By military, nobody can solve. Dr. Abi, Prime Minister of Ethiopia, I want you to read. Even let alone Oromo question of a small national situation cannot be solved militarily. Militarily, it will only bring the antagonism, it will bring the hate, it will bring the destruction, and finally, you will be defeated. You have an historical opportunity. You have started a regional peace. Thanks for having and for understanding that you went to Eritrea and you signed the peace and you built at least an atmosphere of peace between Eritrea and Ethiopia. Thank you that you have stopped that the troublemaking policy of TPLF by sending the small weapons and so on and, and, and so on, involving and creating warlords in Somalia. The last two year policy on Somalia was positive, and thank you very much for that. You didn't intervene. On the contrary, you won't even to reconcile Somalis. That is a positive step you have taken. Charity starts at all. Deal if you are a leader of the Orom, and then the leader of all Ethiopians for us. Deal with the Orom organization rationally. Discuss with them. It is difficult to be in position of power and responsibility. As the Amhara's proverb says, Lijin Kasamu Therefore, your brothers and sisters who maybe didn't understand you, and if you don't understand, they didn't understand you, you have to bend down and try to bring them to the level what you think, or if they are advanced, take what is advanced from them and adapt it to yourself and negotiate with your own people. The whole world is watching you. Already, the press in the imperialist country, after you came to power, you had the most positive press I have ever seen in 40 years staying in, in Europe, you had a positive, positive press. You got a Nobel Prize. That price of peace has to be applied also peace for Oromia and among the Oromos. Don't look. Ethiopians, they want peace. They want development. They want to live together. And you will be the vehicle for that. So this is a special appeal to the Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Dr. Abi Ahmed. For Oromos, an Oromo intellectual in diaspora and inside. Please think. Think that is you are in a historical situation and in a historical uh, 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 situation of the country. We are not like before 2018, please discuss, bring your communities, analyze, bring positive things, positive in the sense you can say cut a cut, but widen and, and let us educate our youth, whether it is Oromos and non Oromos, bring the debate to the level of what we need. That we can reconcile if there is a contradiction and, and, and we can minimize the contradictions and we can chart a new road that the stability of Ethiopia, the growth of Ethiopia is the stability and the growth of the Horn of Africa. One thing must be clearly demarcated. The bandit Wayane is not part of the Horn of Africa. The people of Tigray, 
they are as victim even worse to them anybody they live in a concentration camp like the nazi concentration camp now even they organize their fake election huh? the, like organizing election in tigray and they are elected now and they are now organized the new idea saying that it is the uh, uh, the federalist that they wanted to be the mecca of the federalist please these are charlatan criminals you know what they did to us what they did to oromos what they did to people of tigray to the whole people of ethiopia to amhara and so on so the other appeal is to our amhara brothers some the amhara brothers the same situation in amhara area is the same kind of contradiction which existed in oromia is existed in amhara area especially the bidin was seen by majority of amhara and amhara youth as a protege as an adjective of tpla bidin the leadership of bidin must merge open a reconciliation discussion think and listen to the youth that is why this amhara nationalist movement have developed that's why the crisis which happened in ba- in bahardar happened and the killing it happened please think not think deeper for yourself for your people and for the future of that country you cannot rule by the method masters have taught you a very quick fix it cannot be like that the youth now and the majority of the population are smarter i don't think they can buy such things so brothers you also do your homework finally to the all ethiopian people the people of southern people you are demanding certain democratic questions be patient demand it make sure that your demand must be logical economically viable and discuss it should not be for the interest of a small group click you have to start your demand analyze your demand is in the interest of the majority of the masses of your people or it is in the interest of the very few elite wants to climb up by using this discuss invite other ethiopians and so on finally for the shovanis ethiopians who really wanted to deny history and also to deny the domination the nationalist situation happened in that country the domination against the oromos the southern people the domination of the previous as in on on an amhara peasant and so on and this and this these are another enemy who is the other the, on on the other uh, 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 side in the name of ethiopian unity they want to destroy ethiopia how many regimes in that country have shouted in the name of ethiopian unity and destroyed ethiopia used our use huh? the children of the peasantry the poor have been used and a lot of them have died in that country a lot of them have died everywhere charlatan who really parasite who live at the expense of their own people who incite conflict and war please don't listen to them the demarcation must be very clear for the media people you will be responsible don't try to play a game which is which you cannot control try to be a patriotic be democratic try to reconcile bring something that the society can learn not the society can be divided and inculcate a negative ideas in the mind of the people in belgium or any democratic country such kind of inculcation it is it, uh, you will be brought to court in that country there must be a serious court to find such kind of individuals or group who incite the killing among the population therefore uh, this for the discussion is uh, of the horn of africa to open a debate among the peoples that we all of us that if you want welcome to come to discuss with us uh, with uh, elias amar uh, 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 hamdan in arabic for those who want uh, even in amharic it is allowed our aim as the home of africa television we are a television by nobody subsidized that's
We are a television who wants that the people of Horn of Africa to have the right information on the basis of unity. One people, we have one interest, and we are against those elements who leave as a parasite on us by dividing us, whether it is by region or by language or by clan or by religion and so and so on, who are in service of external forces. The Horn of Africa television appeals to you. You are welcome. If you have an issue to discuss, it could be an educational. Comrade Amara is here. What is the problem of the Silta? For example, I asked the people of Silta, you have a lot of educated people who live in the United States and so on. We don't know. We are the recipients. We don't know your case. What does it mean, Silta? From where it comes? What you are demanding? Huh? 57 nationalities and the sovereign people. We know the bigger ones. We don't know the 57 nationalities in the South. The Southern people intelligence, which are a lot of you. You live in the West, you live inside the country. You are welcome. Come, let's debate. Let us discuss. Huh? Why? Uh, uh, what is your demand? How did you reason? What was the problem in the past? How you are ruled? For example, I was told that it is somebody from Capucho, in order to come to have a seat, a piece of paper, he have to travel 1,300 kilometers, pass through Addis Ababa and come to Awasa. There is no even a democratic administration, administrative and so on. Why the citizens have to suffer? Please, you are welcome. You can come to us. You can discuss. You can explain to us. The people of Eritrea, they don't understand. The people of Somalia, they don't understand. The people of Djibouti, they don't understand. The people of Kenya, they don't understand. The people of Ethiopia itself and so on. 57 nationalities in the South. The second major economic, in fact, the first major economy of the country is the South. 48% of the economy of the country comes from the South. There are a lot of nationalities in the South we don't know that. These are our brothers and sisters. Please come forward. You can speak in English, you can speak in Amharic, and we can have a debate with you. We can learn from you, and you can learn from us. And I salute you. We want to build a new culture, a new vision in the region. We are fed up of war. We are fed up of miseries. We have to build now. We have to build now for the coming generation. And for that, I appeal me and Elias Amara and Hamdan, and I thank you very, very much. The next uh, 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 discussion will be about, in general, what is this for North Africa? We will bring the situation of Sudan. It is, uh, what is Sudan? Uh, how many, how big is this Sudan? Why is Southern Sudan is split? What was the idea of General Garan when he says the new Sudan? What does it mean when Sudanese progressive intelligentsia, when they speak about the Triangle of Khartoum, which have destroyed Sudan, that you we can learn what happened in Sudan, that it is you also learn and we can learn. We will invite our comrades and brothers Sudanese to come into this television and they can also explain their version of the story. Is it possible that it is? Is it must that the South could have split it from the North? It was not the idea of General Garan. Now, yesterday, that it is the government of Southern Sudan became bankrupt and cannot, Southern Sudan, it cannot even pay for the civil servants. The situation, the marginalization is happening in our area, in our peoples. We have, if we don't understand our problem, we cannot have a solution for our problem. Therefore, I thank you very much. And I ask everybody who wants to contribute to discuss our uh, Horn of Africa TV is open, is not sponsored by anybody. It is just few people we are working on it. And uh, you can write us uh, in, in, in the Facebook and leave your telephone and so on. We can contact you and we can have a program with you. And I thank you very much. I'm really worried, my brothers and sisters. And particularly, I appeal to the all Oromo intelligentsia, use your hikmah. Please, la takuna rasulan aminan, kuna rasulan hakimah.
please use wisdom. Wisdom. History will judge you. This historical opportunity should not go out from our hands. And I thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Mohammed Hassan, for those uh, wise words articulating beautifully the vision uh, of the new Horn of Africa, uh, a region of peace, stability, and cooperation amongst all peoples uh, in all the countries of the Horn of Africa. We are not, as we keep say, saying it again and again, we are not condemned to, to a vicious cycle of uh, wars and poverty. We are bigger than that. Uh, we have to rise to this new occasion, this new hope uh, of ushering in a new era of peace and cooperation amongst our peoples. And in order to have that, uh, as you have uh, mentioned, we have to dialogue. We have to continue the dialogue. And so with that spirit of uh, continuing the dialogue, we bid you Farewell uh, and peace. Until next time, Amelia Samare, goodbye.